Oil prices uh, hiking uh, quite substantially, kicking in at midnight last night, which means already high food prices will ultimately increase. The egg shortage due to the bird flu outbreak is also pushing poultry prices up. And for those with debt, the cost of repaying is high, with interest rates steady, but still at the top end of the cycle. But for those who live hand to mouth, staying alive is becoming a daily struggle. Today in the Eastern and Western Cape, the DA marched to the offices of the Social Development Department calling for help for the very poor. It's particularly tragic given two cases in recent months in the Eastern Cape where mothers have killed their children and taken their own lives reportedly out of desperation over not being able to feed their families. I'm joined now by ENCA reporter Ronald Masinda. Ronald, uh, good day to you and thank you so much uh, for joining us. You know, the cost of living is even hitting um, middle income earners. So the poorest of the poor are beyond desperate. And, and you've spoken to one family facing that stark reality today, I believe from Butterworth. Tell us more. Good evening, Sally. Well, hunger and despair have been rife in the Eastern Cape for many years, but it took those two tragic incidents where mothers killed their own children. And this was also due uh, to the issue of hunger. And that's according uh, to uh, the many people that we spoke to during those incidents. But uh, the family that we spoke to, and just as a case study, we spoke to the Yankee family out in Butterworth. Uh, they've been living in an informal settlement for the past 40 years. The father of uh, five children uh, says that uh, he lost found a job, a regular job, while working in the mines in 1983. And that's when he uh, left Gauteng to the Eastern Cape. They say that they survive on selling firewood, which they pick up at a forest uh, not too far from where they stay. They also say that their children had to be uh, pulled out of school so that they can be out there to support the family and try and continue the business. Uh, they say that in the current state of affairs in the country that they can only buy meat or eat meat once a month. They are hoping to get more assistance from government. But what is also uh, uh, strange, Sally, for many people who have been also critical of uh, the job of the ANC in the province is that this family uh, says that uh, under the ANC, uh, their lives have changed quite a bit because they occasionally do get some food parcels as well as essential items. And that's despite uh, their desperation for positive change. Earlier, I spoke to them and this is their story. I call the chance of Babai School in Cuba. Is in those badly glazed Funega School in the Jindes Fanem Pasaganji. Cubans in my Cubo for Nautuba Baba P. School. As is if I am man, the Cuba Abandubas, man, a grandes. Tina has no chance of us as man. Malunga <laughs> Bakuli Sangas, the colonel told the Sio Vesha, Bakule Loshop. Dear Vumela Nagakul, Kelling us in the sea. Go in sea. Oba is a cool pool. Ebo being I mean, it's some comfort to hear that at least they have been receiving food parcels. Um, we know sadly that that doesn't reach everyone um, and that despite the 350 rand a month grant people are still resorting uh, to, to suicide uh, to just avoid this horrific hunger. Um, it, it's, an, it's a tragic situation and, and clearly more has to be done. Uh, today we've seen the DA um, staging a number of marches around the cost of living crisis focusing their attention um, at the Department of Social Development. I wonder if you could tell us more about what they're hoping to achieve through a march like that and what exactly they're calling for. 
So the Democratic Alliance in the East in Cape, they are calling for positive change, of course, for many people who are suffering in the province. And they wanted to hand over a memorandum of demands. And some of those demands, Sally, uh, speak of the issue of uh, the tax and levies uh, that uh, they want cut so that uh, the transportation of uh, food is much lower. They also want uh, people, uh, the lower income earners, to have uh, the VAT scraped uh, in terms of the food items that they buy. They also want to see social grants to be increased to around uh, 500 rand per month. They also want food gardens, uh, community centers to be used as food gardens so that food security is there for people. And also they want government to reallocate uh, the 50 million rand that uh, they they uh, put out for aid to Cuba uh, to be invested more in people who are suffering here in the country. But even more so uh, from the Democratic Alliance, they are also urging many people in uh, the province to not vote with their hearts but with their minds uh, come the elections next year. They feel that uh, people are still stuck uh, uh, to difficulties and uh, the poverty uh, stricken areas where they are due to the consistent uh, vote that uh, they continue to vote for the ANC, especially during the general election. So it has to be said also the DA is using this platform, today's platform, to try and uh, garner votes ahead of next year's election. Uh, much to the disappointment, of course, of Oscar Mabuyane, the premier of the province, who said yesterday that people shouldn't be used, uh, uh, you know, to score uh, political points so that parties can uh, sort of try and get ahead uh, ahead of the elections and that uh, the Eastern Cape government is trying its best. He also spoke about around 120 uh, billion rand investment that was uh, pledged during uh, the province's uh, investment conference uh, that took place recently and also that unemployment has also dropped from around over 47 percent around 2020 to uh, just under 40 percent this year uh, during the last quarter so although while uh, Oscar Mabuyan is seeing some positives the DA is still concerned about uh, the state of affairs here in uh, the province we heard from the provincial leader Andrew Waitfield this is what he had to say, and I have to say, Sally, that he was also disappointed that the Department for Social Development was not available uh, to collect that memorandum of demands. Sadly, the Deputy Director of the Dep Department refused to come and accept a memorandum after previously agreeing to do so. So we're now going to take that memorandum to Bishu directly to the MEC for Social Development and to the Premier. There are a number of interventions and proposals that we've made around uh, the, the cost of living, sp specifically around VAT and, and zero-rated goods and making sure that we can identify products that the poorest South Africans need to survive and to bring the cost of those food prices down. We've also highlighted the, the cost of fuel, which drives up obviously inflation and the cost of living for ordinary South Africans. Yeah, uh, Ronald, thank you so much for, for bringing us this perspective from the Eastern Cape. As you said, it's an area that is poverty stricken. Many people are in a desperate situation. Thank you so much for that update. That's NCA reporter Ronald Masinda. Let's stay.